key aspects of collaborative learning between uh, educational professionals, for example, between teachers, is the multi-layered. Um, multi-layered it means that uh, they have different uh, layers, and each layer has some specific characteristics uh, to result into deep level learning. The characteristic, for example, for the, the participants is that uh, it's uh, uh, voluntary. It's not uh, button up. Uh, secondly, you have the characteristics of the kind of the variety of the collaboration of learning. And third, it's also important to have uh, the good conditions also in the school context, mostly the time uh, created by the, the school leader. From the Flemish government, we have a facilitating role to play. We can stimulate the collective learning between uh, education professionals and we uh, do that by now for example we organize um, different one day seminars about uh, for example about learning together in a team or also um, school leadership we also focus on collective learning and the conditions. Yeah, school leadership has an important role to create uh, different conditions for collective learning uh, between teachers or between um, other partners. And um, it's important that there are some structural conditions, for example, uh, making some time together that different uh, teachers can uh, learn together, they can uh, uh, visit their, their teacher next door and make some observation in the classroom and give uh, feedback. Um, and also it's very important that the school leader has um, the, the, creates some uh, cultural uh, conditions like there's uh, safety enough to uh, give some feedback and to do some suggestions to, to the other colleagues. If you look at the classroom and teachers who are willing to use collaborative learning in their class, of course there needs to be a transfer of knowledge, a transfer of experience, uh, a transfer of best practices. Now the only way to do that is first of all having support from your management. If they have a buy-in in what you are trying to uh, achieve within your uh, classes, um, it's, it's beneficial because then your colleague uh, teachers will more easily join in. Um, what we for example do in our school is we regularly do during lunchtime, um, we give brief courses on one aspect of collaborative learning, one small tool, one small way of working with students and that's explained with a little tool with a few uh, colleagues around you and then we try it. We take it back to our classrooms and then a few weeks later we meet up again and we talk about the experiences, what was good, what was not good, where can we use it and what can, can't we use it for. These things are important but you have to be facilitated by let's say your management or your teachers teachers allowing you to do those kinds of internal trainings. One key aspect of about uh, collaborative learning and teaching at school, in my school uh, particularly, uh, I would say is first implementation of um, getting my colleagues aware that they don't have to be an island but that they need to share their knowledge that we can collaborate on um, making, developing projects for our students at first, just at school level. But through the MOOC, I also learned that uh, input from outside the school, from experience elsewhere within Europe, also helped me to develop my uh, lesson plan for my students, the little projects that I design. Collaborative learning on a sort of project-based learning, um, each individual student can play its own part. We have um, students in our class that um, don't like to work with other students, like to be their island, like to be in control of everything. But if each student is assigned a certain role and other students depend on the information that students gather, they, will, they are forced to. Of course, they will not like it at first, but 
learning to deal with it is also in a way learning to deal with life. When they enter their workspace later on, they will have to learn to cooperate. They can't be an island anymore.